Hi, my name is Megan Mosselder and I'm an artist. I am primarily a large scale installation artist and I am a former Tulsa Artist Fellow. I'm currently based in Atlanta, Georgia, where I'm also a professor at Kennesaw State University. Today, I am going to show you how to make a mobile out of egg curtains. Mobiles as an art form didn't really start to exist until the early 20th century, when the Russian artists and early kinetic sculptors Alexander Rodchenko, Nam Gambo, and Vladimir Totlin began to experiment with it. The first real breakthrough came in 1920, when the American artist Man Ray assembled 29 coat hangers based on the Whipple tree, a mechanism that has been used for centuries to distribute force evenly through linkages when horses or mules pull a plow or a wagon. The next and biggest breakthrough came in the early 1930s when the American sculptor and trained mechanical engineer Alexander Calder started to apply the Whipple tree mechanism in a new way. Instead of attaching lower elements to both ends of the wires, he replaced one on each arm with an abstract shape. This opened up a new universe of possibilities and Calder explored it without hesitation, making thousands of awe-inspiring mobiles over the next four and a half decades, ranging from miniature size to 100 feet. The term mobile, a French pun meaning both mobile and motive, was coined by Marcel Duchamp while visiting Calder's studio in 1931, although he apparently already used the term in 1913 for his bicycle wheel, which some consider to be the first kinetic sculpture. And now it is your turn to make a mobile using materials that you can find in your own home. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna want to do is gather your supplies. Uh, we're gonna be using wire coat hangers, which always seem to have abundance of. And you're gonna, of course, want to use some egg cup holders. Uh, I'm gonna use this styrofoam because uh, I think um, it will hold up to the elements and I think I wanna put my mobile outside. You might need some tape. If you don't want it to show, you wanna use some like clear tape. Um, you're gonna need wire cutters. Uh, sometimes you can use uh, some really heavy duty scissors to cut coat hangers, but they can be really difficult. Um, so I would suggest finding some wire cutters if you can. Um, you're gonna need some pliers. Um, scissors. Super glue, just in case. Uh, if you don't have super glue, uh, you can try and use a craft glue like Elmer's or tacky glue. Um, you're just going to have to uh, glue things down and then walk away and let them dry for an hour or so. Um, I'm going to use some heavy duty um, thread. This is actually macrame thread. It's pretty, um, a little stronger than sewing thread. Um, if you do not have macrame, thread on you, you can just use regular thread, sewing thread as well. I've got my sewing needle here. Um, I've also got some floral wire to use um, if you don't have floral wire. And obviously you can't go to the store to get some. You can use twist ties. So these are handy dandy, uh, useful, something that I like to keep. Um, tabs of hold on to just in case and then I'm also going to be using some buttons as a way to weigh down my um, egg cup holder thingies. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut my egg cups out. Okay, so now I have all my little individual pieces. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean them up um, and try to make them look a little neater, nicer. Make my um, make these little pieces look intentional. I'm also thinking about um, creating kind of like a petal-like structure. So I think I'm gonna draw some shapes on my cups. 
and see how that turns out. Okay, you may have noticed that I abandoned my pen early on in this process. I have lots and lots and lots of years of experience with making art and teaching art. I have a really strong sense of how things are going to go when I cut them, which is why I give up on the pen you might decide that you need some guidelines first before you cut and you want to draw your shapes on your egg cups first. You know, the more things you make, the more experience you have, the better you get. So I have all my cups cut out and they kind of remind me of um, daffodils because it's yellow it's kind of got that shape so now I'm going to set aside these cups for the time being and start working on the metal armature of the mobile so I cleaned up my workspace I've got my um, little hangers that I'm going to use and I have um, started clipping some of them. Um, you will notice that hangers can be incredibly difficult to uh, cut. The wire is pretty tough and that's why these um, clippers really come in handy. These pieces and I'm going to start it off by making the top part of my mobile. And to do that, I'm going to take these two hangers and put them in a cross formation. Um, that way they'll be a little stronger. I'm also going to twist this one, oh, this one's pretty loose already. I'm gonna twist it so it's facing this way so we can kind of double up on that hook. I noticed that grabbed my floral wire. This stuff works great because it's so uh, flexible. Um, and the way I'm kind of uh, using this wire to reinforce this uh, cross shape that I've created with my hangers is that I'm making sure that it's kind of established, wrapped around the top here. And then I'm wrapping it through and under these other shapes. If that makes sense. Um, now I can encourage you to continue wrapping your shape to make it look a little more intentional. So it's not just um, functional, it's nice to look at too. 
Okay, so I wrapped my hooks so they're together. Um, I decided that uh, the legs of my mobile were a little long, so I chopped them. You also may have noticed I've curled the ends. Now, wire hangers are hard to work with. They're really stiff um, because they have to uh, hold up close. So you're gonna need some strong hands um, to help you with this. Um, when I do this, I hold one end with my left hand because I'm right-handed. Take my pliers, put this at the end, and then I just curl it down. And then I switch my hand around so I keep curling it, and this time I'm curling it up. See? And then you got a hooky do. Okay. Next part that I want to do is I want to create um, a centerpiece for this mobile. Um, so I'm going to wrap this part of the hanger around at the top. I'm going to use this wire that I wrapped around the um, hook to kind of hold it in place. And I'm going to do it again. Got the hanger part in my left hand, pliers in my right hand. And then I'm going to bend this hook down. And I'm using the strength of my left hand to hold the wire in place while I bend this down. Okay. See, I have a hook shape there, and then I'm gonna smush it together. Okay, so I got this shape. And you're gonna start off getting a straight piece. A hanger. You put your pliers in the center and you bend it down with your left hand. Okay. You move the pliers over. See? And then you're gonna take your left hand and you're gonna push the wire up. Okay. And then you're gonna switch over to this side. I'm gonna squish this a little bit. Can you see him cat? So I'm holding it. And I'm gonna bend that wire up. Okay. So this creates a little place for your wire to rest. And then I'm going to make some loopy loops at the end. I'm holding it with my left and I'm gonna bend it down. And I'm gonna switch from here to here to push that wire up. Okay. Same thing over here. I'm holding it in my left hand, pushing the wire down. Also making sure that this lump that I created, this bend in the wire, is pointing up while I'm bending the wire down. I got this piece. And now, I'm basically gonna create this part. Okay. So I'm gonna start off by taking a piece of wire Create a loop like this. My little egg cup is going to sit on top of it like, like that. And I'm actually going to make the hole a little bigger. I'm hoping that will encourage it to spin in the wind. Okay. So this loop down here is holding it in place. So once I got that, I'm going to bend this down. Take 
this piece. Put that together. I'm gonna close that loop. Okay, so we got that. And to create some kind of some visual interest, I'm gonna shake it up by adding different lengths of cups, if that makes sense. Something I forgot to mention at the beginning, uh, you really should be wearing glasses when you're cutting wire because it can fly across the room really easily. Last thing you want to do right now while we're stuck at home is uh, stab yourself in the eye with a piece of errant wire. So please wear glasses. You've been warned. <laughs> Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a button. And the thing about the button is that it kind of helps with um, weight. You need to put some weight in these little egg cups, especially since they're made out of styrofoam. And they don't have a whole lot of weight behind them. So in order to kind of create some balance, you're gonna have to add weight and I'm using buttons to do that. You can use beads if you'd like. Um, there's lots of ways to do that. Um, I'm also using my, my macrame cord, my thick cord here. Like I said, thread works really well. To make a knot, I just kind of hold the thread between my thumb, thumb and finger, create some loops, and then I roll that together. I'm going to take my needle Pierce that little thread ball that I created. Just pull it through. And you have a knot. And you want to make sure that your knot is obviously bigger than the hole in your button. Okay. Um, if you need some buttons, if you need to look for some buttons in your home, um, often our clothing comes with little extra buttons stitched to them, and yeah, that could work. So I've thread my um, cord through the center of my little egg cup here. There's my button. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna cut this, and I'm going to tie it end of this hook that I've created. Now this macrame cord is, uh, is a nylon cord with plastic. So um, often what I'll do is uh, burn the ends with a lighter. You can also use a dab of glue. I like to tie it a few times just to make sure um, and the reason why I'm talking about, you know, cauterizing the knot, so it will stay put. And this is where your glue can come in handy. I'm just gonna dab a little glue on there. Okay, so this is the center part. Um, I'm hoping to create some spinners in the center here. Um, and I wanna create like a tier of them. So I am going to super glue this button to hold all my various little uh, egg cups in place. You 
could also use um, a piece of tape and um, some craft glue, some tacky glue, and uh, hold it in place that way. And what I would do is um, I'm gonna take a piece of tape and um, put it, you know, just create a thin piece of tape. Masking tape will probably be the easiest. You do this and then cut it so it's small. And then um, you basically wrap it around the wire like this. And then you could thread your button on top of that. Obviously you need a button that's holes are big enough. Okay, see? Okay, um, another word about easy. If you choose to use a nylon cord like I'm using and you wanna cauterize your knots like I'm doing, please be very, very, very careful. Um, this is a, a nylon um, cord. Uh, when it's burnt, it melts and it turns into like this molten plastic. Uh, if it gets on your skin, it's going to burn really badly and I don't want that to happen. Also, if you are a young person and you're doing this project, please make sure that your parents or your guardians are okay with you using this type of material or uh, if you need to, if you do want to burn your knots like this, you want to, um, ask for some help okay so I have one more little egg cup to add to my mobile um I would encourage y'all to decorate your mobile mobile <laughs> tomato tomato um you could put some ribbons on it you could use some glitter um i would not use spray paint spray paint has a tendency to dissolve styrofoam um if you're using the kind of egg cartons that um, aren't styrofoam, you could spray paint those. Um, anything that you can add to dress your mobile up a bit more to make it sparkle. Um, now I'm thinking about glitter. I might have to put some glitter on this <laughs> because the thing about um, mobiles is that when they're out in the wind they blow around and if you have something metallic on your little egg cups it's gonna catch the sunlight and it's gonna sparkle and refract and it's gonna be really pretty you know um, this could be a good 
Mother's Day a gift because we have Mother's Day coming up in May. Um, I really hope that we are all free to leave the house by then. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Okay, so real quick, I'm gonna show you the burning process that I use again. Again, you can also just put a dab of glue on the end of your knot and it will also not budge a bit. This will not, the burning, you can't burn traditional sewing thread unless it's like a polyester based thread. It's gotta have some plastic in it. Okay, so here we go. and see what happens. So I hope you've enjoyed this latest edition of Chillbrook. Be safe, be well, and happy crafting.